Hey y'all, welcome to Running From 40. And in this video, we are gonna be continuing our Getting Started series, and we're gonna be focusing on running gear. Uh, we already talked about shoes, which is certainly a part of running gear, but we dedicated a whole video to just shoes. And now we're gonna go to some of the other gear that I find to be important. Uh, I'm not gonna go into gear that I use, like massage guns or foam rollers or things that uh, help you with recovery or other aspects that improve your running, but instead focus on the gear that I actually use while running. So again, we talked about shoes. Let's go to the next most important piece of running gear that I think uh, we definitely should spend some time thinking about if we're interested in biofeedback, and that is a running watch. So um, again, we if you look at the, at the video that I've done where we talked about how you can analyze your volume and your intensity, you can do through, you can do so through more rudimentary means, like just seeing if you can talk, having that conversational pace that we talked about. But when you want to start looking at heart rate, and I really think it is a low investment way to not have to stress as much about it. It might sound, I think to some, it's like the moment we introduce gadgetry, we think we're over complicating. And that can be true. And sometimes I'm the person that will say that. But there's a sense too in which having the gadgetry, having the technology can actually free you up to think about other things. So instead of thinking about how does my, how does this um, intensity feel? How is my effort impacting me? We can look at, take a quick look at our watch. And if we trust the science between heart rate or behind heart rate training, then we can go, oh, every once in a while, you just check your heart rate out and you see how you're doing. And I'm not saying turn your brain off and just look at a number on your watch. You need to be able to think through and to discern if what your watch is telling you is accurate. So anyway, and I apologize for yelling. I don't, this is, okay, we're in a different place. So I don't know how the echo is going to be. I have a different, I have a new phone that I'm shooting on. I don't have uh, a microphone. So I just want to make sure my voice is picked up. So we don't, this is an experiment. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, first up, running watch. I use the Koros Pace 2. So I can't compare this to other GPS running watches, mainly because this is the only one I've ever had. I mean, this channel is called Running From 40. I'm 41. I haven't had enough time to go through two running watches. So the Koros Pace 2, it has received a lot of accolades and I like it a lot. It seems to do most everything that I would want from a running watch. Quickly, the, the well, maybe I'll get to the couple things that I would like to see that aren't there but they're pretty, they're pretty minor. And um, first of all, let's talk about what I do like about it and what's typically appreciated about it. So Koros has been, uh, it's been said that Koros, what they excel at is the low to mid range watches, offering a lot of bang for your buck uh, on some of these watches that are a little more focused on the bare essentials as opposed to you know, having a computer on your wrist. Uh, so Garmin may have some, some really amazing $1,000 watches, but if you want to spend a minimum amount of money for $200, you can get a Coros Pace 2. It is 28 grams. It's super light. I wear it all the time. I wear it while I'm sleeping. I don't even notice I have it on. I would recommend, if you like the Coros Pace 2, to, uh, to do this band, the silicon band, instead of the nylon fabric -y band, because that one will absorb sweat, while this one won't. It's a lot easier to keep it clean. It weighs 28 grams. It's insanely light. It's very comfortable. And it does a ton. It's, it, it provides some bells and whistles that only more expensive watches from Corus's competitors will offer. So you'll get things like running power, which is usually you need another device to actually pick up on, on that metric. So that's really cool. And just one more, one more thing you can look at when you're analyzing your data to understand you know, how your runs are going, how you're improving, what's actually happening um, in terms of in terms of understanding data 
and how that represents your run. So again, the Coros Pace 2, it, what does it do? It has an altimeter in it, tells you what elevation you're at. Uh, it gives you your steps throughout the day. I will say it gives you a lot less steps than like a Fitbit will. So if you want to use it for like fitness tracking, it's okay. And if you run, you'll still get your steps, but you won't get as many steps as you would in a Fitbit. That's because with the Coros Pace 2, it focuses on quality steps, what they say is quality. So, you know, if you take a couple steps, you shuffle here, you shuffle there, it's not going to give you credit for those. It gives you credit for sustained steps, more in line with a workout. Um, it's, it is customizable, so you can set up your own workouts in it. You can connect external heart rate monitors to it very easily. It has a nice backlight feature. So if you're working out while it's dark out still, uh, you can turn the backlight on but you can leave it off the rest of the time so it doesn't drain your battery. Speaking of battery life, it's really good. If you don't use the real-time heart rate uh, monitoring on it, meaning that it's always checking your heart rate throughout the day, uh, then, I mean, I wanna, they'll say you can get up to like a month of battery. I, I don't do that. I actually have the real-time heart rate on. I've experimented with taking it off. Maybe I will again as I kind of transition, and now I have this Aura ring, which I utilize a lot for heart rate, but, uh, I still get usually like a week in between charges, which is just fine for me. Um, speaking of the heart rate monitor, it, it does have an optical heart rate monitor. I do think wrist-based heart rate monitors still leave a lot to be desired. I know the Coro, Coros Apex Pro 2 apparently has an improved heart rate monitor uh, with the optical monitor in it. So you can definitely try that out. I still think we're, we're living in an age where an external monitor is best. If you do, though, want to simplify and just use the watch, you can, especially when you're doing more steady state running. You're not doing interval runs. You're not trying to pick up on, on big changes in heart rate. You're just kind of settling in at a heart rate and you're staying there for the majority of your run. I, I think you could get away with it. The one thing you will want to do is just tighten it. You want to tighten it while you're running. It would be uncomfortable just wearing it like this throughout the day, but so you can't get a finger even in there. You want it that tight, just really tight. And then it will pick up your heart rate a little bit better, apparently, while you run. It, I'm trying to think. So the two things that I would like on it, although these, I, I'm not complaining because a, a watch at this price, it would be amazing if it had these things. And actually, I mean, Koros is really known for, I mean, you don't just get which you have when you buy the watch with, with the hardware, but it's always pushing out new updates where you get new features. And when I first got this, it didn't have any map feature. And that was the one thing I thought would be cool, like being able to load up a, a course maybe that I'm not familiar with. So find a course online, put it into my watch. You had to get the Apex, uh, the Coros Apex, which is a little more expensive, a little heavier. I, I didn't opt for that one because I didn't think it was overly important, but it sounded nice. Uh, so now the Coros Pace 2 does have a bit of a map feature. It's like a breadcrumb feature. So you can see where you've run and you can navigate that way. You can also load courses. The only thing it doesn't show is you can't look at the, the display and see an actual map of where you're at. It will just be black around it. So I think if you could get to where you have the actual map showing, that would be amazing. That would do everything I need it to do. You could use it a lot more for trail running when you maybe aren't as familiar with the course that you're tackling for the day. And then another thing that I would like would be to have the ability to put Spotify on it, to put music on it, even if it wasn't a ton, even if it was just a couple, you know, just a very low amount of uh, storage, even if it's a couple podcasts or, you know, 50 songs or something. I would like that. If you could hook up your, your AirPods to it and enjoy that while you're running. I think that would be great. So, but all in all, it's it's phenomenal. It, it really is. Again, I can't compare it to something else, but if you do, I've, I've recommended before, go to DC Rainmaker. He does an, an amazing job of, of researching and testing different, different, what would you call it? Like, I mean, he has heart rate monitors, he does watches, so different sporting devices. And he writes these real in-depth reviews. He compares different models, different technologies. So if you're really interested in deep diving, go do that. 
But I will say across the board, the Pace 2 is re really respected. And so if you, you're saying, yeah, I would like a running watch, but I don't want to think too much about it, get the Pace 2. It's one of the most affordable out there. And I, I replaced my regular watch with it. You know, you can change the watch display, like the face. Um, you just, I don't know, it doesn't look bad. Again, I'm not somebody who's like going to work and wearing a suit and tie. Uh, I do work, but, but I work from home. Yeah. But anyway, that's that's that. Coros Pace 2, go for it. I would. Next up, let's talk about heart rate monitors. So right away, I went and bought a chest strap heart rate monitor, which as far as when you're actually running, that's considered sort of the gold standard. It uses EKG. I think that's what it is, right? I think it's, I think it, or is it ECG? Electro, electrocardiograph, I don't even know. I don't, you, it's beeping. It's beeping that I'm probably wrong. You know, anyway, man, just ignorance. I'm surprisingly ignorant to some things. Honestly, I just, if I don't really need to know anymore, I just know that, oh, okay, this is the one you put right on your chest and it measures your heart. Um, yeah, that's what that does. Heart rate monitor. It's considered the most accurate. I didn't get like a Polar real nice brand, Wahoo or something. I went on Amazon and got the cheapo that got decent ratings. So this is Cuspo, C-O-O-S-P-O. It was like 30 bucks on Amazon. And I also got some ultrasound jelly to go with it. It's especially useful if you don't sweat a lot or if it's winter time and it's drier out. You just put a little bit on the where the electrodes are at and that will make sure that you're getting a good connection throughout your run. This was incredibly accurate. It never steered me wrong. I used it for probably nine months. It was my only heart rate monitor. It connects to my watch really easily. And my wife now uses this one sometimes. The thing is, is it's kind of uncomfortable. Like, I don't think it's uncomfortable because it's tight against you, but it's uncomfortable, I would say. I don't know, you're out there, especially in the winter, and you're like, you get to where you're going to run, you like lift your shirt up, or maybe you put it on beforehand, but still, the thing I don't like about it is while you're running, for me, it always seems like it wants to slip, and it just never quite, it just feels like a pain. So I was listening to a podcast with Flores Gearman and Dr. Mark Kukazella. Dr. Mark was talking about the Polar OH1, so I went and found the Polar OH1 Plus. Now, I don't know what happened between the regular OH1 and the OH1 Plus, but this is what I use now. It's by Polar, very reputable company in the world of heart rate monitoring. It is actually just an optical monitor, but because it measures on either your forearm or your bicep, it does so much more accurately. And DC Rainmaker reviews this, and this like was competing against some of the chest strap monitors. Again, if, if I was gonna do uh, some interval training or a max heart rate test or anything like that where I'm trying to test out uh, different ranges within my heart rate, uh, different heart rate zones and whatnot, I would go with the chest strap because it's, it's in real time picking up much more quickly. But if I'm doing steady state running, the Polar OH1 Plus is great. It's 60 bucks, I think, on Amazon. It, uh, you, you just put it on your bicep push the button a couple times, it turns on. You do have to remember to do that if you do get this, or else you'll be disappointed. Uh, but it, it links great to the Koros Pace 2. It also has an app where you can, you can use just the app. That's really nice about this. You actually don't need a watch. So if you're not concerned about seeing your heart rate in real time, you could just buy the Polar OH1 Plus, not use a watch. And actually, if you have your phone on you, if you like to run with your phone, you could circumvent the watch completely. Uh, it's not a terrible idea. I mean, it would be cost savings. You could save yourself a couple hundred dollars and it actually records your heart rate. So your workouts are still gonna be recorded. You can still upload to Strava. Uh, I think I love the Polar OH1 Plus. It's been replaced by the Polar Verity Sense, but it's like 40 bucks more. And they've solved a couple issues. I guess the biggest issue, maybe there's a, I don't know. They're like ergonomic things. This, this little dude, that the actual, the little sensor itself, will, it, it flips over when you're like putting it on. So it's kind of like, you kind of got to mess with it. And I heard that when you're using it swimming, it can flip over on you. So just, yeah, if it's underneath a shirt maybe, and you're, I don't know, it has the propensity to flip over. 
So if you are concerned about such things, you don't mind breaking the bank a little, you can spend like 90 to 100, maybe find it on a sale for the polar verity sense. So there you go, biofeedback. I've preached that it's helpful, it's beneficial, it's important with, with you know, with a nice light watch like the Polar Coros Pace 2 and something like a, a cheap chest strap monitor or the Polar OH1 Plus, you'll, you'll be all set. And it's really, it is, it is kind of a set it and forget it type thing. It doesn't, you know, you can get as technical as you want. You can customize your own workouts and get all the data that you want focused on. Like if you're focusing on cadence, you can set it up to just show you your cadence on your watch. If you're focusing on multiple things, you can, you can customize it so you can see all of that information in whatever way is most helpful for you. When you're, when you're actually running, you have different watch faces and you just scroll in the Coros Pace 2 and it will show you different data. Show your elevation you're gaining. It will show you your pace. It will show you your effort pace, your cadence, your, your pace for that lap, how far you run, how far you've run um, on a lap or, or whatnot. So the, the, the possibilities, while not limitless, they are vast. So, but we're gonna move on from that. There are other options. Again, DC Rainmaker, check his stuff out if you want a different watch, if you want something maybe a little more than the, than the Polar, I'm sorry, the Coros Pace 2, or, or, or just something different, uh, definitely check out. They do have the Pace 3 now, but I think it's 300, so. Okay, so moving on from there, I'm going to talk about the other running gear that I used. And that's gonna be stuff like shorts, base layers, shirts, socks, and rain jacket. So I'll start with rain jacket. I've only ever had one running rain jacket. This is the Janji, I think it's called, I don't know, like Rain Runner, Cloud Runner, some, something. Let's see if it tells us on the tag. The Rain Runner, there you go. So it is incredibly light. It's vented on the back. Again, Janji Rain Runner. I got it, it's it like retail for 200 bucks and I got it on REI for less than 100, like 97 or something on clearance. So uh, this is like midnight blue or something. It's very, very light and it's vented, which is important. It does got the nice little hood with the drawstring on it. Uh, I'm trying to think of this. It's got pockets and stuff. It's got the little cinch thing. I think it does, maybe it doesn't. Does it got the little cinch thing you can tighten around your waist? I don't know. It's got a variety of pockets on the inside. Check it out online. You can get something else. I wanted a reputable brand that people thought highly of without breaking the bank. Um, and so I, and you can even roll the hood up, I think, and snap it down so you don't have the hood. I don't know why you'd want to do that because it's a rain jacket. Um, but there you go, the John G Rain Runner. It is important to note, most running rain jackets, you're not gonna stay completely dry underneath. One of the reasons is, and it's kind of funny, even if it's not raining out much, you'll come back and be like, I got, I still got wet. It's because you sweat and it's not gonna breathe as well. So the sweating, the moisture in the air, you're just gonna be wetter underneath, but it, it's not gonna keep you bone dry. Uh, but I think for me, I wouldn't wanna sacrifice ventilation to stay perfectly dry because then I think you'd overheat and that's another problem. So I like that you can use this in a lot of different temperatures. If it gets above 60, I like this morning, it was raining a bit, we were close to 60, and I just ran with my t-shirt uh, and a hat. But, you know, it's up to you. You, you, you go for it, whatever you think, you know, you test it out. And uh, But it is important to have, especially when it's cold out, if it's really cold out and drizzly, it's super nice to have this as your outer layer. So that's that, John G. Rain Runner. Up next, I'm gonna go over some tops here. The rest. Everything, well actually no, well yeah, I'll, I'll save the socks for last. Everything but the socks is from Path Projects. And I use exclusively Path Projects as I'm able, almost exclusive. I, some of my shorts are not from Path. Actually, I only have one pair of their shorts for now, but I want more. So if you wanna buy me something, I like me some Path Projects, Graves, five inch inseam shorts, just saying. So Path Projects. Um, this is the Pyrenees shirt. I think these are both the Pyrenees. I could look this up, should have looked up beforehand, maybe. You tell me. They're just two different thicknesses. So this is the thicker one, 
maybe it, maybe it's got it on the tag again because uh, one's like the T19 and uh, path I don't know if they're I don't know if they're giving us that info it's, again this type of stuff a guy should maybe look up before he does a video it's debatable but this is the thicker they have two thicknesses you can go online and look Hooded shirt by Path Projects, incredibly comfortable, nice and warm. This is, again, the thicker one of the two. What's really cool is they have this little opening, so when you're wearing it, your watch can be seen through it. It's got, it's got the little uh, hole there for your thumb, too, so you can keep your hands warm. The hood is great. It, it doesn't like want to fall off your head. And it's also got this little front part here that comes up over your chin to keep you warm there, too. No drawstring or anything, no pocket. Uh, but it's, I love it. It's so warm. I wear, I wear, I wear path stuff, not just when I'm running, but almost all the time. Unless I have to dress nicely, I'm probably wearing a good deal of path projects gear. Uh, Scott Bailey, florist Gearman and company do a tremendous job. They use awesome materials and almost everything of, the, of theirs is made in the U.S. too. So it's like a direct-to-consumer model. It's not huge on marketing. They don't sell it elsewhere. You just get it through their website. And it's great. So this is the thicker of the Pyrenees hoodie. I think they're both called the Pyrenees. I could be messing it up, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. You just go to the Path Project's website and you'll find what you're looking for. This is the thinner version. Um, got all the same features. It's got the little, it's got the opening uh, in the wrist for the watch. It's got the little thumb holes so you can keep your hands a little warmer i have found that if it's above 40 maybe 45 somewhere in there yeah like 40 to 50 i mean a lot of times a lot of times i'll wear this for a while and then i warm up and i take it off but i wear this out when it's a little warmer so like 40 to 50 or i wear it in the everyday situations too and then if it's below 40 probably transition to the warmer one but your mileage may vary there. This is the thinner one. It's made of the same material as their Cascade t-shirt, which I'm gonna show you, which I'm actually, this is a Cascade. Well, actually I don't know if this is the Cascade. This is their, one of their print shirts. Maybe this is called something else, like their range or, or SI, I don't, I don't remember. It's their printed shirts on PATH. Uh, again, this is made in the US. It's made of the same material as their t-shirts. So I'll show you this t-shirt next. Same color, same material. And they're incredibly comfortable. Again, t-shirts all made in the U.S. So this is their Cascade t-shirt. No print on it. And it's made out of Tencel. A Tencel blend. I am 5'8", 150 pounds, and I get a small. This is a small that I'm wearing on the print shirt. And then this is a small too. The interesting thing is, so the print shirts run a little bit smaller. So this is a little more form-fitting on me. These are a little bit looser. The nice thing there could be is that you actually almost get a half size option. So if you're in between sizes and you don't really care if it's a print or plain, then you could probably find something that fits you exactly the way you want it to. I do wash paths stuff or all my running nicer running gear. I wash it together and then I hang dry it, um, which might seem like an extra step. I don't know that you need to do that. It's up to you. I just like to preserve the life of it. So again, I wear these shirts all the time. I've always, I, I'm always on the lookout for good t-shirts because I wear t-shirts a lot, but I want them to be comfortable. I don't want them to be super tight in the neck or for the sleeve to wing out in a weird way or for it to be real big around the midsection. Just all sorts of weirdness going on out there in the t-shirt industry. I wouldn't think it'd be that hard, but apparently it is. But Path Projects has figured it out. They're incredibly comfortable. I wear them for every occasion. I wear them underneath dress shirts even. I, I love them. They, I was so happy when I found their t-shirts because I'll just wear them forever. So please keep making them. I right, please, please keep doing it, guys. Next up, we have running shorts. These are the Graves. Wore these this morning. They are the five inch inseam. I like the five inch inseam. To me, I'm like the guy who, you know, when skinny jeans got popular. So I'm not a big guy. I'm 5'8", 150. Uh, maybe for a marathon runner, I'd be big. A little thicker which is funny but I tend to not like lots of extra fabric I don't like heavyweight stuff I just like to be light and feel like I can move well 
So when skinny jeans come out, I'm like, okay, I'm not wearing skinny jeans. But I did notice that you saw a lot of slim fit stuff. So I would always wear the slim fit. It's just a little more tailored. It's not like tight on me, inappropriately tight, uncomfortably tight for me and you. But it it was nice and trim and form-fitting, not real baggy looking for somebody who's smaller. And uh, when I move around in it, there wasn't a lot of extra fabric. I feel like I can move well. It's kind of the same thing with shorts. They offer a lot of times three inch, five inch, and seven inch inseam in shorts. The seven inch kind of looks like a 90s basketball player on me, like a little baggy. Uh, the three inch, we just don't want to see anybody in the three inch, not you, not me. Uh, it's inappropriate, guys. Kidding, kind of. Uh, but the five inch is perfect for me. You know, it doesn't look weird, but it's nice. I can move well in them. Uh, the Graves, the difference between the Graves and the Sykes, I think is just the pockets. The Graves has a big center pocket in the back that you can actually fit a phone in. And then a couple side pockets. I think the Sykes has two rear pockets. So um, the pockets are zippered. Again, um, these are uh, these are just, these, these are not made in the US, their shorts are not. And I'll show about, talk about the hat here in a second. Um, but they're so good. I mean, I can't, the, the, they're so comfortable. They don't have an inner liner, which is nice because then you can take care of it with your own base liner from past projects as well, or, you know, get something cheaper off Amazon. But yeah, lots of pockets, zippered pockets, very comfortable. Uh, I think that's all you need to know. If I could have a pair of these for every day of the week, I would. Past projects, graves, five inch inseam. The Sykes though too, it just depends on what you want for your pocket layout and, and how you use pockets. Um, so we're, we're getting close. I should mention my hat because I'm going to forget it. This is the Path Project. You can read right on there. This is the Muir cap. I also have a uh, Rainier, which is, I've worn it in other videos. It looks like more of a trucker style hat. But all of their hats are made with performance material. So they're all meant to be ran in, which is nice. So some of them look more like a running hat. Some of them don't, but they can all be ran in. Uh, this this guy right here, the Muir. I, I wear running hats just out and about. Again, I don't mind looking like that guy who looks like he would probably have 13.1 and 26.2 stickers on his car. But I, I don't. This is just my way of letting everybody know. But but yeah, this in seriousness, the Muir hat, it's it's a really nice, comfortable material. It's, it's just very comfortable to wear. I have this in black as well. They also have navy blue and white, I think. Uh, Velcro back. You can wash these too. They just say when you wash them, make sure that you unvelf. Just uh, if you have to, if you have a huge melon like me, just make sure that you the, all the Velcro is covered up when you wash it. It's got something like ninety four. I'm not going to count them right now. Ninety two, ninety four, ninety six, ninety something laser cut holes for it to be breathable. It's also got SPF in it. So uh, with the exception of these little holes you're not gonna get a sunburn. You might get little whole sunburns on your head. Somehow that doesn't happen. So the path, Muir cap, highly recommended for running. I don't run in the hat when it's warm out, but I like to run when it's cool. And so it's nice. It's like the cap, the hat starts like this, then it goes backwards when I start to get, when I wanna change. And then I'll like drop it from my, in my car for my last couple laps as I'm getting warm and I wanna let some, some of my heat uh, release from my head. but. Anyway, it's great, especially in the rain. It's nice just to have something so the water's not just drowning you as you're running. Um, get a little thirsty. I feel my throat. It's getting to the end. Good thing we're getting to the end of this video. You're probably as excited as my throat is. A couple more things, and I promise we'll wrap this up soon. So I mentioned the shorts from Path Projects don't have a liner in them, but they have awesome base liner stuff. So... When you think of a base liner, you might think of something like uh, tights, like running tights, and that would be that would be one base liner option. But then they also have these that are like boxers. I think these are the Lynx, and then they also have the Tahoe. They have them as various lengths. I think these are, they might be, no, I think the longest is eight. I can't remember if it's three, five, eight. I have some three inch and I have some five inch. I tend to like the five inch the best. They don't ride up as much. That depends on your thigh size. If you have large thighs, you would want to go longer, like an eight inch. 
if you don't have that problem as much, no problem with chafing, you could go shorter just based on comfort. The Lynx is made for uh, a little bit warmer conditions and the Tahoe is made for sort of all purpose. They're both incredibly comfortable. I replaced all my Hanes. Goodbye Hanes, hello Path Projects base layer. So I wear these as my underwear every day. They are, I guess I can't communicate it. You have to try a pair, just try it. Try a pair and you'll notice that cotton is awful. Running in cotton and uh, feeling like you have a pound of weight carrying in your box of briefs afterwards is just something we don't even need to talk about anymore. You know what I'm talking about. We don't want that. So again, as base liners, they have the, the, the tights. They have thicker ones for winter. They have base layer. I think they have base layer shirts. I, I, I don't have any other base layer shirts, but I have, I have these for every day of the week. Path Projects, uh, again, the Lynx and the Tahoe, and I do either the shorter ones or the mids. I guess, I, maybe I said I have a size. I don't have any eight inch, but I have like a five and a three. And I, I like the little bit longer. I think the eight inch would be too long, but not for everyone. If you have big thighs, you might want to try eight inch. Two more things to go over, socks. So a lot of times I just wear athletic, just short, whatever, athletic socks. Um, but I do like these. These are from Injinji. I I hope I'm saying that right, Injinji. In uh, these are toe socks, which might look kind of funny. But as you know, I am a pretty big proponent of natural running, you know, a more of a minimalist shoe. And so, well, this allows your toes to be independent. When you're doing that running motion that we talked about, you know, you're, you're that running form, you're running, and when your foot is pronating, you're also, your toes are splaying. And this is just allowing that movement to be free like it should be instead of hindered by your socks being tight. If you have wider, looser socks, that's fine too. I don't think this is nearly as big of a deal as the shoes. Some people think it's like, you might as well not even get the shoes. They're barefoot style if you have socks. Turns out socks are stretchy, so I don't know if it's that big of a deal, but I do like the toe socks. These are just like their ankle or their no-show one. They have great customer service too. So does Path. Path has got great, great customer service and so does Njinji. Oh, I'm sorry, these are Njinji. So does Janji. I got Janji and Jinji. Whew. But yeah, these are good socks. They're very comfortable. I like them a lot. Um, there you go. And I also have a longer wool pair that I wear in the, in the winter time. You might think, would your toes get cold in these? Kind of like gloves versus mittens. Um, I do have I do have Raynaud's syndrome where I tend to have uh, circulation issues and in the cold, I'll tend to get, my circulation won't work real well in my extremities, like my toes and, and fingers. Uh, so sometimes I do think about that, but for the most part, it hasn't been an issue. It's just been comfortable. So I like wearing them a lot. And last but not least, maybe they're least, I'm not sure, but we have Sonny's. So, and the, the, the strap here is just from Amazon, but these, uh, these are the sunglasses I like to wear. I, I wear these all the time. These are, the brand is Gooder. I mean, literally Gooder, but there's no vowel between the D and the R. It's G-O-O-D-R. I got them on Amazon. You can also order them from Two River Treads, support a local, you know, minimalist shoe store. But these are like 25 bucks on Amazon. They're really good, polarized. Uh, they fit real well. They don't bounce when I move my face and grimace and all of that. Um, I like them. People complain they scratch a little bit. Mine are scratched some, but they're $25. $25 is kind of that sweet spot. It's nicer than the $10 dollar general ones but you're not spending like $200 on Smiths or Oakleys or Maui Gems or something. So uh, for $25, I've been very, very happy with the Gooder ones. That's like a Wayfair style. Again, you can find them on Amazon or support local through Two River Treads. They carry them as well. And I like those. So whew, we made it through. But that's just those are just some things to think about. I think the watch and the heart rate monitor is maybe one of the more important considerations where I would actually recommend them. As far as path, I recommend it, but you can go to TJ Maxx and get outfitted as well for not too much money. 
Uh, and you can always work your way into it. I didn't buy all the Path stuff day one. I just tried it out and I liked it so much. And for me, I work from home so I can wear more casual clothing. So I like to wear shorts and a t-shirt when I'm at home a lot of the time, at least in the warmer months. And and so I love, I use it not just for running, but it's my everyday gear. I literally, I take a shower when I get done from my run. I put my next day running gear on my shorts and my t-shirt. Um, unless I'm doing something, that's what I'm, that's what I'm, unless I'm doing something where I can't be casual, like going to church or something, then that's what I'm doing. And I'm all ready. I'll sleep in it and I get up and I run. So thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was great, uh, if you'd like to have, if you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a video next week. I'm not even sure what it's going to be about yet but I'm sure it's gonna be exciting. I did go up to the Freedoms Run in, in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, and I'm going to make a race vlog for that, but that's gonna take some editing. And that's my first time ever doing that. So it's gonna be a week or two or four before we see that, so. Anyway, until we meet again, thank you so much for watching this video. It, it means the world to me that you're watching, that you're interacting. I appreciate it. Until we see each other again, take care, y'all.